we wanted to um, let folks know that the town has uh, negotiated with the property owner at One General Way, Dana's property, and um, we're proceeding with uh, a lease of property in there for a temporary library. So um, we thought that was important to let people know that that was, uh, that was coming. Um, so what we've suggested is, and there's a draft decision, uh, that this would go through minor site plan review and I think when we first reviewed um, One General Way, the overall <coughs> a year ago or so, um, uh, we decided that with the larger spaces, we'd like those tenants to come back right. um, as opposed to the smaller spaces. And the locust plan helps you understand where this is going. There we go. So um, it's over. By uh, baby furniture is on one side, and the other new retail tenant is on the other side. So this is right in the middle. And you can see where the book drop is uh, on the sidewalk and where the parking would go. Uh, 50 spaces approximately are uh, highlighted in the area up the front with um, staff parking spaces in the rear and then dumpster area. In and there's a floor plan that's included in your packet as well. And that goes too well. But essentially, um, in this space, is going to be a combination of um, library facilities and some storage. So that's essentially it. I'll turn it over to um, Evan, our project manager for Lord. the library. Alright, well what if we were able to 
actually relocate some of the metal shelving there. Um, and they might actually have an active uh, collection. So we're still in the process of um, that may very well just kind of be boxes of furniture uh, back there. But we've um, completely cordoned that off from the public area and also left a, um, an egress corridor out to the out to the rear. And uh, some have thought that the two means of egress at the at the front of the um, of the tent library space were uh, somehow not adequate. But uh, their current locations meet or exceed the uh, quarter diagonal length of the, um, of the of the tent space itself. So um, that's largely where we're where we're at and what you're what you're seeing here. Um, on the site locus plan, we initially had um, shown uh, a book drop at, at one of the um, uh, at one of the islands uh, here at the front, um, and uh, I think for some convenience uh, factor, um, we've tried to relocate that to the to the main sidewalk. There's a couple of um, handicap spaces and a. And a curb cut right by the entry there, we would expect that that would um, uh, fall just outside of that, uh, that area, but still near the, near the front door um, for after hours book drop. And I think we're, we currently have two at the library. I think we're really only looking at relocating uh, one to this uh, temp space area. I don't know if you have any, any questions that I might be able to answer. Well, I've got, I've got a couple of those, David. The, um, the whole thing is just just a slab floor? It is. It's just concrete floor, uh, okay. slab on grade. So you don't have to worry about loading? Loading, and, and that, was a, that was a fairly large issue. Um, we would have gone out for um, uh, an RFP for various spaces and whatnot. And one, right. of the, one of the other spaces that we looked at was on a second floor and clearly uh, just from walking through the empty space right. and hearing the creaking there was no way that that was going to be so we were kind of primarily looking for uh, kind of a, a ground level um, right. slab on grade type of situation so that there's no no restructuring issues there okay the uh, I've forgotten the interior if there's any um, ceiling supports or scattered through or is that just that to work around um, there are some columns throughout the throughout this space they they are on the plan they're fairly uh, hard hard to see um, I can, uh, can you want to it's not important. I mean, yeah, there are there are a few columns, uh, presumably enough to hold up the roof. <laughs> right, and it's and it's been uh, it's been held up for quite some time, so it appears right. to be uh, okay. more than adequate there. Yeah. So I don't think we start getting into some columns until we get. Uh, so there's one over here, in this corner, mm -hmm. another one over over here, and then we kind of jump down to here. In here, okay. Another oddball one here, um, and then we're back uh, within the space uh, over over into here. The um, the tech serve space is is a public space, or is that? Um, um so I would say it's it's. Um, that area, the way that the way that it's uh, in essence designed or in, envisioned, um, that really, um, with the exception of, I mean, this is all, this all in essence has public access, but um, there's a low partition uh, right along here that has some workstations here, so that's kind of a. A more private zone for um, uh, for staff, but all of these, all the stacks, the circulation reference desks, um, the computer areas, are all public areas, kind of culminating in the children's area um, to the rear, and then really this kind of line back in here denotes um, more of a service-oriented okay. 
right? Uh, uh, director's office and assistant director. No, I wasn't sure. I mean, that the area that you're just pointing to where it says tech serve, I wasn't sure I understood what that. Uh, it's just a was. term that they use for for the folks that kind of um, receive uh, transfers from other libraries, yep. um, receive and send out books, and and you know do some of the. Um, the behind the scenes kind of work that needs to needs to go on to for the library to operate. Okay. <clears throat> so it sounds like this plan it may change slightly. So for example you mentioned the vestibule that you may add. Yeah, I have kind of always thought that and I know we had an initial uh, discussion with the with the building inspector. Sure. Um, I think it was a little unclear whether that was truly gonna go on or, or be needed for this kind of temporary 18 month dur duration, right. but um, uh, I think we're, we're looking at, uh, in essence, kind of a seven foot by seven foot vestibule that gives you the door swings open, you have your four feet to the next door and whatnot. So it really just slightly adjusts some things down a little bit. We're trying right. to keep uh, that same uh, distance that's currently from the front wall to the circulation desk. It's about 10 feet right now and we want to try to uh, keep that because it seems to be the right kind of feel for the, you know getting getting people in and out and sure. through the main door. That and then also I think you said this storage area may it may be open to the public depending on no, 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 no. it no, will be. Absolutely okay, so not it's not going to be stacks of books no. that the public can access. No absolutely not. Oh okay. Um, the, so part of what uh, so part of what's going on behind the scenes at the library while we're doing construction at the at the current location is that um, we're, we're getting on this kind of electronic uh, RFID tagging thing. So literally every book needs to kind of come out of a box or off the shelf and get, you know, somehow magnetically <coughs> tagged or something right. so that that can get tracked electronically so that once that stuff's moved back to the uh, to the to the newly renovated library, um, the uh, uh, how they keep track of those things and also the security Inventory gates and whatnot at the at the entries um, yeah. will will all key into that. So there will be staff kind of access, but they'll they'll go in, they'll get a box of books, they'll, come, they'll do their, the work that they need to do out in the in in the areas that we have here, and then return that, grab another one. I got you. Okay. So, I guess my question about the changes, and I, it's more of a procedural question. I, mean, I don't want to tie these folks up, but I mean, if changes to this plan occur, do we need to account for that going forward, or do um, so we just approve it with as conditions? Yeah, so sometimes what we do at the end of the site plan review decision is, even on the minor, to say anything of a minor nature would be staff approval, Yeah. and then anything more significant, you know, you might come back. So, well, can I yeah, please. Uh, ask a question and then come back to, to a thought on yours? The vestibule that you're talking about, right. that's all interior, I assume? Correct. Or, so, facade, same two doors that you're talking about, either the swing door plus the other Right, one. that other one's so, probably just a single, but, uh, correct. So, from the layout of the inside here, um, I mean, it's not really a site plan issue. I mean, they can change it till the cows come home as long as there's nothing that then changes sort of the um, site plan impacts. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and I don't think you'd ever get that far. Right. So we have the so so we security have, grade, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so, we, so we have, you know, um, an access, you know, accessible spots out right out front and and the rest of that, generally, the idea of where the um, where the public and patron parking is going to be, and generally in the rear where the dumpster would be located, and, uh, and some staff staff parking there. So, so on that issue, the I know that the um, the book drop, the existing book drop, um, you know, at the at the library is a that's a big container. And I just, without having a picture, a close-up, it's hard to imagine, but I think the, the walkway in front is not that big. I mean, it's probably a standard four-foot 
No, so that's, no, that's actually, I think it's more than eight, eight, at least yes, six to eight foot so, width, but absolutely we so would need to make yeah. sure that we're leaving at least four feet clear for yeah. the sidewalks yeah. and, and whatnot. Right. Absolutely. And if I may, Jody Hayward with Danish Properties, um, it is in the lease that a final placement of the book drop will be um, approved and we can you know, make right. sure you guys have yeah. a copy. So these folks are, are hiring, uh, you know, an architect and engineers to put together plans to, um, you know, submit for um, the permit and, and the rest of that. So it should go through whatever normal channels through the building department. Gotcha. Yeah. We are actually working. Don't want to get too tied up on what's going on inside. So. Um, anything else, guys? Um, no. I guess going back to the parking, it's not <laughs> not really theirs, but just the whole the whole development yeah. um, and some of those issues um, that I think were <coughs> articulated in the memo. Yep. Of the town. That's right. Yeah. Don't forget about those. Yeah. So. No, go ahead. No, I just sort of tossed it at you. <laughs> go for it. So there was an email sent on Wednesday. Um, Regarding signage, what's the plan for signage? Uh, square footage of occupancy. Uh, yeah, for the entire site. The parking study, and then any other additional exterior site improvements, such as additional lighting. So, I'm not sure who's seen this or who can. I, I, haven't, this. I haven't seen it, but I can um, take a copy and address any questions. Um, part of our condition when we came last, started last July through the winter, October, November, um, one of the conditions is we have to update um, CPDC and Gene with the updated affidavit from the owner um, as to this change in the square footage and the use. Um, that's in the process of doing, we're in the process of doing that right now. Um, we will get that to you. With that, you'll see we're under um, the requirement, the threshold is 200,000 square feet of non warehouse space right. we're not even close with the library included okay so we're well under um, our parking is in excess of what's required you know that from going through that's all being updated as well um, and we're well aware of our obligations and we'll do whatever we can uh, we've also given the town a retainer for the as-built um, so we have to give you a final as-built for the site and my wish is we're doing it as we go with the building permit so to make me do it again at every hearing is a little Duplicative. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping we can do that. They have the retainer, George Zay Morris, and everyone seems happy. Okay. And then for signage, signage. do we? So I think there's a, a, a pillar <coughs> sign out front that, that we expect there'd be a slot in, um, and then some, some normal yeah. signage over the door. There's a pylon sign at the end of the Marconi Marketplace. Mm -hmm. You'll get a panel with full building permit for that. This was a rendering that was given when we did the proposal for space. Um, it just shows how the front entrance will mask the existing, and they can put whatever they want to take the library. They'll pull a separate permit for that with Glenn or whatever they decide to have. Where is the master signage plan? Right. right. So the idea yeah. is, right, there's a master signage plan for the, for the, for the um, site. For the site. And as long as it complies with, the proposed sign complies with that master signage um, plan, which is basically, sort of the dimensions, the size and the layout of the sign and the lighting, then you don't need to come back to us. You just go get, you know, show that all to, to Glenn and get the, um, the, the building permit. I, mean, I would, I think that you'd probably be hard pressed not to um, put a sign for a temporary building that <laughs> complies with the master yeah. signage plan. I mean, it's not all that onerous. Okay. Goose neck lighting and gives it to me. Get all that. Do you have a yep, it's exactly, yeah, it's yeah, the okay. sign and the three goose neck lights. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Is that, <clears throat> oh, the solar salon condition, which I'm drawing a complete blank on, to be honest. Well, that's the, um, the multi tenant thing that's going into this area. With the suites for the hair to hair. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Style suites. So, mm -hmm. if you recall, we conditioned um, the town engineer wanted an updated site plan showing the current number of parking spaces, ADA, van, auto, 
as well as the parking table that's associated with each use and how um, what they provide it. So um, just a reminder that they need to provide that prior to occupants of Solus and Okay. So not necessarily something for the library, it's but more the for the, the okay. And the landlord as well on on everything we have to do. And just to um, remind everyone, we're in excess of everything that's required for ADA. And we're not even fully occupied, but we've always been in excess. Okay. Yeah. And just after every single occupancy, as Jody had mentioned, they, they are to provide us with an affidavit of um, the total amount of occupied space. Just to keep it fresh. Parking. Yeah, and there's also the, um, the strip along the, the back of the building that's supposed to go to parking places and so Yeah, there's a portion of the back part of the building we are looking to de demolition and take right. down. Um, the timing on that, we're looking to get some tenants in to you know, help pay for it. Okay. Um, and we're hoping that changes. If anyone knows anyone looks for space. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just... It's, it's our job to remind you that you promised to do that. Yes, it, I, every day I look at it, I remind myself. So, thank you. Okay. Anything else? No? Gene, Jesse? There's no additional lighting or anything, you know, no additional exterior improvements. Nothing changed. Okay. Let's take a look at this decision. So on the findings, we'll just delete that one that with the proposed signage that you had a question on. Yes. Right. The proposed signage will be provided according to the master signage plan. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. on the agenda <clears throat> For a signage certificate of appropriateness, uh, the hitching post at 2 Haven Street. Excellent. How are you? I'm fine. I'm Leslie Leahy. I'm the hitching post. Excellent. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll ask, I don't know, Gene or Jesse, if there's any opening comments, and then we'll turn it over to you. Okay. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think so, so too. Hand it off to Leslie. Uh, the only thing that's different about um, from the master sign plan is the font. And the little leaf on the T is the logo. Other than that, the size, the elevation, the lighting, everything complies to the master sign. So right now, the blade sign is allowed to have a logo, but the wall sign is not. Correct. And, the only, and you're suggesting you're wanting the wall sign to have the same logo as the blade. Correct. Okay. Well, and it's and embellishment rather than yeah. yeah, and I, I guess and I would font, say... The lettering is different from yeah. the other signs in the master it, sign. It, it's important to note, I think, it's not that the wall signs aren't allowed to have logos, it's that the wall oh, signs, yeah. it, we, as part of the master signage plan, we requested that any logo for the wall signs come for approval. Right. Yeah. Two, sort of yeah. two different things, we, right. because the idea there was not that we didn't necessarily want logos, but that we wanted to 
review okay. them to make sure they weren't sort of out of keeping with mm -hmm. the rest in this. Uh, right. My take is it's within keeping. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, so. I mean, the old the old sense of wonder had the little spiral running right. over. I mean, that was a, an extra thing that we approved for them. I yep. mean, this is uh, less different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, is there anyone else that needs to approve this, like the owner of the building or anything? He did approve it. He did? an email in the package. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I saw Mark approve it. I was just assuming he was the owner, but okay. So then this will go to Glenn, the building inspector, should they assign a permit from him, and, and that's essentially it. Okay. There's no change to the lighting that's already there. It's there. The yeah. uh, blade side bracket is there. The bracket. It's the existing hardware. Move that the CPDC approve the certificate of appropriateness for the proposed sign at Two Haven Street for the hitching post. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, we, we stamp and so forth oh, yeah. for a couple of these. A couple of those. Uh, Give me a second. Here. Oh, there you go. This one? Yep. Anything else that needs to be stamped? Usually the location, yeah, I think but okay. I think in this case, I don't think there is a look. There's yeah. yeah, and I'll just. I'll right give here. Glenn these pictures and he'll he'll understand that yeah. it's going in the same place. I can do this. Just to Shows yeah, I mean, it's, I mean yeah. you, you can. Yeah. It won't hurt. Working career, the uh, it used to be a lot harder to get uh, good quality photos in certain color photos. <laughs> now, more. now it's you know a minute. <laughs> Three dimensional. Um. All right, good. Well, let's keep moving. So the next on the agenda, we have the update and discussion on comprehensive updates of the zoning bylaw. And Jesse, Jane, and I had an email exchange about what we we're going to cover in today's, uh, in this uh, segment of our agenda. Definitely want to talk about the timeline, because I think some things have changed, shifted, um, and I'll let Jean and Jesse talk about that. <coughs> but then the topics specific to the bylaw itself, sign, parking, and site plan review, with Nick not here and Jesse and I were talking, I know he's very, um, he's been involved pretty heavily in the signage or mm -hmm. the sign bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. So we may want to wait for him on that piece. I think site plan review, John, I believe you've been involved in that in the past, or I mean, is it yes. worth tackling tonight? I think we mm -hmm. probably need to tackle something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that what we need to do yeah. is basically we need to review what the VHB, what Ralph has, has come up with. The uh, Zach has taken a quick pass through it, but that was a, a while back. And I'm not, I don't think we the uh, zoning committee has had a chance to go through the latest and greatest uh, with much detail. Right. So it's it would be worthwhile if we can uh, you know spend the time to to run through it. Um, probably just you know sit sit and read it, and if, if something jumps out at you, then yeah, we'll call it out. Yeah, call it out. Yeah. Sounds good. So, why don't we start with the first piece, um, the timeline? And uh, Gene or Jesse, mind kind of giving that up? So yep. we gave you two schedules that we want this. Um, one is for. <coughs> September 29th town meeting, which is a uh, special town meeting. And 
the other is for the November 10th, 2014 town meeting, which is a subsequent town meeting. And um, the approach that we're recommending is to proceed with the zoning for medical marijuana at the September 29th, 2014 town meeting. Um, getting that done in advance of the November town meeting when the moratorium expires, uh, we think is probably a good way to go. And so um, by just taking that one piece out of order, out of the rest of the comprehensive update, we can tackle that one um, and be long in advance of the deadline. Um, and so that's what we've recommended here. Um, September town meeting is also an opportunity for us to uh, get some more feedback from town meeting members. Obviously, dropping this document in the mail to town meeting members a week before town meeting is an awful lot to expect. Mm -hmm. So we thought, um, and we've had a lot of town, well, we've had a good showing of town meeting members come to the ongoing public forums. Um, not everybody, but we've had a pretty good showing. Um, but this 184 town meeting members, um, and that's a big group to convey a lot of detail to. So we thought September would be a great time to not just give an update, but, uh, and, and we may want to do that, but to understand from town meeting members what the temperature is on some of the things that um, probably going to be up for debate. So, for example, um, in the past we've used those handheld voting devices, and if everything goes the right way, we'll have those for the September town meeting. That's our goal, so that we can have you know 200 plus handheld voting devices and really get the temperature of town meeting on so many of the things that you know the zoning advisory committee is is thinking rationally that this could be some things could be handled more by what we call the daytime government and streamlined so that it doesn't have to go through special permit processes and nighttime government and all of that but there may be that may be up for some dis more discussion I mean mm -hmm. it's it's the advisory committee's um, suggestion that we try and streamline it as much as possible but um, I'm sure there's going to be lots of town meeting members <coughs> that would like to have the opportunity to either think about that, weigh in on that, and possibly uh, suggest another approach. Um, and that's a good opportunity to have that dialogue and to, and to really understand what the consensus is of town meeting, because they're going to ultimately be the ones to either vote it up or down or, you know, IP it or whatever. And it would be nice to kind of get it right for the, for the overall group so that we can have a new bylaw and not get bogged down in something like, say, for example, signs. Right. So um, on the September 29th timeline, um, you know, we've, we've certainly uh, had discussion here, work sessions all along. And um, so in addition to that, um, we're suggesting August 11th as when CPDC could vote to add the zoning amendment to the warrant for the September town meeting. And then um, all the advertising and such would be happening um, in advance of what we're showing as a September 15th, 2014 public hearing. Now, this may recall, you may recall this, this is a, on a similar track as when we did the electronic billboards. It's pretty close to town meeting. It's doable, sure. but it's close. So, as you know, town meeting, um, uh, you have the, uh, the only way zoning can proceed to town meeting is through this board. And so your recommendation, either up or down, is, um, is the way town meeting is presented with the information. So that's by state statute. Um, we could have the meeting, the public hearing, August, our, at our August 25th meeting I think it is 20 the, the last meeting in August mm -hmm. um, yep. it could go that way um, the problem with that is that's the week before Labor Day and I don't know that I mean I know a lot of people generally take that for vacation 
So to have a public hearing on one of the most popular vacation weeks is the you could do it, uh, but that's the only other alternative to having it to try and avoid having it so close to town meeting. But we could make it to do it that way. So that's <coughs> that's depending on what the board wants to do. Um, the board of selectmen is going to close the warrant. It shows on your chart as August nineteenth. Uh, town manager decided that he's going to push that out to September 2nd. So that would be just when we come back from Labor Day weekend on the Tuesday. <coughs> what was it? Okay. September so, 2nd. So these things are basically out of order uh, on the sheet we have. Well, they're in the order in which, um, uh, you know, they would August. They occur. Yeah, August is when you know mm -hmm. we thought we'd get at least the CPDC to vote to add this to the warrant. Right. Um, then we have to start right. advertising. We start advertising in early August if we're going to go with the earlier date, and then not so much if we're going with the September date. Um, the war closing the warrant was going to be, as I say, August. Now it's September second. Um, that's really sort of the linchpin for administratively what happens with town meeting. Then the rest of this is uh, all in-house stuff, wh when stuff is due to the town manager, when things go to print, uh, bylaw committee meetings, PowerPoint presentations. That's really more housekeeping. And then we yeah. have a pre-town <coughs> meeting and a technology drive-through. So everything after when the Board of Selectmen closes the warrant is more daytime government. Um, yeah, but the, the public hearing, um, is in between the warrant background and warrant goes to print. Is that right? Correct. The public hearing can happen any time. Um, you can have it in August or you can have it in September. <coughs> uh, I, I if guess we that's... If we have the material, right. Okay. And we can vote on adding it to the warrant before the public hearing? Yep. Right. I, I, I got to say, I, I think... Um, at least on my, with, during my time on the board, we do it this way more than um, than the way that you have it laid out as an optimal, um, just because of time and life and yep. you know schedules and vacations and Christmas and Thanksgiving. It always seems that um, this is sort of the way that we end up having to do it. Um, Right, and then if something comes out of the public hearing, we make a report. Yep. Related to sort of what we. Okay. Which could be an amend then result as an amendment. On uh, the no, not even. It's like when we had the smart growth, we had the public hearing. There was a lot of discussion about parking for the yep. downtown smart growth zoning. The warrant had long been printed, yep. and everything was you know all all queued up for town meeting. And when the CPDC got up to give the report, they said, we're going to give the report approving it, but with one modification on yeah. the parking. So it happens right there. Right. And that's how town meeting is presented with the article. <coughs> I think that's better than trying to do something in the November. Last, vacation week. The last meeting yeah. week in August. I mean, that's oh. sort of like, uh, let's try and sneak it that's through. That's what it's... Thing. That's what I worried about, and then I looked at it again. And I second guessed myself and said, "Oh, maybe it's cutting it too close." But September is really when everybody's back. <laughs> I think I mean September fifteenth is a fine date, but it doesn't come between <laughs> August eleventh and and August nineteenth, <laughs> which is what appears on the paper. That's my only comment. The. That's exactly the point of the discussion, though, is that we're, we're taking it out of order of the normal way of doing business. Yeah. So usually we do try and have a public hearing before we close the warrant, if we can. We, we often do do it that way. But it, there's no magic formula to it. We just put the public hearing up front because we have to get the notices out. So it's more for our own benefit, which is why it might look a little awkward. But there's nothing related to okay, whatever yeah <laughs> notices for adding for us to vote on adding it to the warrant there's nope. no okay no nope. yeah so we take it out of order but we're still in complying with the process so to speak yep <clears throat> i can
could do a new one and put them in chronological order. Mm-hmm. That makes more sense. No problem. I mean, I think we agree we're ready, right? I mean, I, I don't imagine we're going to make any more changes other than mm-hmm. what was discussed last time. There's the clerical question. This, is, Because it's in the September special town meeting, it needs to be presented as an amendment to the existing zoning bylaw. Um, and presuming that it passes, we have to um, recodify the, the change that passed mm-hmm. into the new structure sure. for the November town meeting. Yep. Which, I mean, is very straightforward, but we just got to remember to do it right. Right, now. right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's really straightforward if you remember, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, good. That makes sense. Um, is this the latest and greatest that's in our packets or uh, the medical marijuana yes so this is what the zoning advisory committee had last reviewed we are meeting with Ralph on Wednesday he's going to provide some comments back to us what based on the last questions the zoning advisory committee had related to I think Dave had a concern about the agricultural exemption right and then we wanted to ask him about the provision where it prohibits these dispensaries from being located in medical office buildings where practitioners are licensed to prescribe. Yep. So once we get those two items buttoned up, we will have the language pretty much set. And Nick had a couple of he had a couple of grammatical changes. I remember one, that, not specifically, but. It was significant because it was that should say not and not the word not is not there. So I don't remember what it was, but I just want to make sure that whatever Mm -hmm. Nick points it out. Maybe it's right here. Medical marijuana dispensary shall have a gross floor area of not less than 2,500 square feet or in excess of 10,000 square feet. I think that was it. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> whatever Nick said last time, yeah. it was it seems like years ago. Um, so <clears> make sure we get that accounted for. Well, it says no registered medical marijuana shall have a gross area less than twenty five thousand or in excess ah, of ten thousand. So that's I think that's they fine. might have added the no. Right. Oh, okay. Okay, good. This version, I think, addressed yeah. that. So then we're good. I mean, it's it works. It says the right thing, but yeah. it's in a funny way. Okay. And the other one is the 1.5.4, which is contentious. On page the medical two. offices. Well, what's the thinking behind that? I mean, what's the what's the negative? What's the downside of having it in a medical office? I mean, why does that even? Yeah, we, that's why we question. Why does it even come up? Well, it, it came up because they they were um, there was a thought that we might the town might want to prohibit the one stop shopping. Of you know you go in to the doctor, get your card, and then walk down and get, and get your uh, oh, product. Yeah. Um, from the discussion at the most recent uh, Zach meeting, it's pretty much untenable. It's it's a restriction that doesn't work with the. Um, industrial area with the Hallmark Medical Center, the Reading Medical Center, and uh, there's no obvious reason for it, for the constraint. Within the state structure 
of um, of these facilities, could someone actually go do that? I mean, our car, our our. I don't know. Can you can you get um, the approval to to be dispensed to in the same day that you can go pick up product? I don't know. I don't know. We I, would, I would guess not. I would. But I would think not. I mean, I mean and that puts that whole thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. The other point that came up was that the um, indirectly it would constrain the registered professionals opportunity to prescribe yeah. Yeah. which is probably something that that you know we may or may not be able to do and probably didn't want to do anyway and maybe something the attorney general would have a problem with you, right yeah so yeah. i think the the general feeling and i mean my own personal feeling uh, honestly is to just strike it out entirely and I think he did say it was optional didn't we yeah. have this conversation that Ralph said that you know this is up to however you want to do it but this is right I believe so I just yeah. think we wanted I think the Zach wanted to confirm just confirm with Ralph <coughs> so that something we'll need to follow right. up with I mean, him yeah the, I mean Dave Tran yellow is um, was less um, less interested in removing it shall we say but you know that maybe he's because of his um, legal situation. I mean, he's a lawyer <laughs> profession. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, anything else on registered mar medical marijuana or the September? Or uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the September special town meeting. I think we're good on having the. <clears throat> vote on the 11th and that'll put us in the right path to get everything in order by the 29th of September okay yeah mm -hmm. well shall we um, should the CPDC recommend the removal of that paragraph or well, where we have it on the agenda for Wednesday, I think the CPDC is, what I'm hearing is the same issue that we talked about at the ZAC. So okay. I think we'll defer to the consultant on what they would recommend. I think everybody no, shares No, we this. want to tell him. I mean, uh, honestly, this is a case where we don't want to defer to him. We want to tell him, you know, um, unless the state law has something on some constraint in well that's why we're okay. circling back to him to make sure there isn't some concrete reason that it's in there I don't think there is and I think the idea that if there's not if there's then the not then the Zach was comfortable that's right. deleting it right. because we so, did not want to complicate the process the goal for Wednesday is Ralph we would like this deleted unless there is some compelling reason statutorily right. that we should have that in there Okay. It's the wishes of the Zach to delete it, and it sounds like CPDC is yeah. um, in agreement with that. Yep. So. Absolutely. Think we're good. Okay. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> um, for November tenth, nothing has necessarily changed. I would assume, although now we've got some more firm dates for the tasks that are leading up to it. Great. So, um, just pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, the public hearing date being October twentieth on this scenario, and um, the board of select selectmen is going to close the warrant September twenty third, which is fine. That's generally how it goes. Almost always that around that date. And uh, like I say, from there for, from there down is daytime government coordination. <clears throat> um, do we know how to word the warrant article? 
in the sense of the uh, basically this is a, a complete replacement. Right. Mm -hmm. Usually, um, we would run that by town council to make mm -hmm. sure we have the wording right. So we'll put something together, take a stab at it, give it to town council, make sure it's worded correctly, and um, put it on the warrant. Okay. Because I mean, I don't know what. I don't know how much we may, we may be encouraged or required to include in the way of a, a list of changes. Uh, yeah, that's um, usually it. It has to do with you know wording it in a way that is such that the um, zoning bylaw of such and such date is struck, and the zoning bylaw of this new date is inserted. Um, much like we did with the zoning map. Okay. We delete and insert mm -hmm. and then highlight in the article in and the, in the background. In the report. Yeah, and we already have, um, I gave a presentation last week to the Board of Selectmen, so we already have an executive summary of the changes that Ralph put together mm -hmm. and a PowerPoint of things that um, we brought to the attention of the Board of Selectmen on what the changes are. So we have a pretty good set of summary documents that we can work off of for okay. the warrant. Um, you're not going to be able to put everything in there, obviously. Well, I'm, no, I understand, but the, uh, the town I'm, council I'm hoping that we're still working toward the new table of contents. And one of the things that might help the um, uh, less active participants would be um, to a certain extent a map of old to old to new hmm. you take the existing table of contents and just note where the provisions ex are the corresponding provisions exist in the new yeah which I did start document. to do so that should be so we can work off of that. Yeah. I did do okay. start doing that exact Excellent. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, when we when the CPDC had made the recommendation on that on the outline. Yeah. Right. So we have we have at least a start on yeah. that. Yeah. Because that that's a um, aid to interpretation, aid to understanding. Yep. And the way the sections have been posted on the website, there's the old and the new, you know, in column form, so you can see them. Well, the columns make me crazy. But, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think I, I don't. I'm not sure if we did that with the accessory apartments, just because there's yeah, so many changes. It was just right. in the graphics, so um, you the know, shorter sections. I think yeah, you know, the purpose and yeah. all that you yeah. can kind of compare from what's there to what's being proposed. Um, mm -hmm. But my sense is that um, in the warrant, there's going to be some summary information, and then it will put point people to the website for the detail. Whatever we can get away with. Yeah. Right. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I had one question. Uh, it says CPDC public hearing on zoning articles, plural. Are we planning multiple? Oh, um, <coughs> we have zoning articles. Who we yeah, I it's actually just so. the one. It's just the one. Actually. Just the one, yeah. Well, Are we doing there, this in one fell I, swoop, I was, take it or leave it? I was thinking the, z oh. the zoning sections, not the zoning articles. Yeah. Well, we, we sort of have to because of the uh, sweeping nature of the, of the reorganization, which is exactly why the special town meeting for the medical marijuana is important. This, When this was drawn up, we were assuming that we were going to have uh, more than one article so that we could ensure that the uh, medical marijuana in, in one or the other of them got passed. I would think hard and fast about that. Because all it takes is for each town meeting member to have a little bit of a, you know, doubt about one of the, not the recodification, but one of the other pieces where 
changes, some sub substantive changes are going to be made and the whole thing's out the, out the window. And if a town meeting member has a little, you know, maybe a little question on one and maybe a little question on another and maybe a little question on a third, then maybe they would have approved, you know, all three of them, but added together, no, that's too much. Change is tough. I, I, and to do it all at once is, but I don't know. I, I share your apprehension with capital letters, but I don't know of any other way to handle it. I think that we have some smart people who can figure out how to change, how to do the recodification in one, and then some of the things like what we're talking about, signs and parking and, and da -da -da as, um, as separate items. But that, <clears throat> that's what we embarked on 16 months ago and decided that we couldn't do it. Ralph's once done this 20 gazillion times. It, it, it can't be. Well, in fact, it might, way to do it. we might well be more likely to approve it in a single article. That's, that's the gamble. If it all hangs together. Right. You know. It's hard to say. As long as we're not we're not hiding anything. I mean, we're what's that? We're not trying to hide anything. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm. So two things. One, the, the one section that I think concerns me the most as far as getting it through by town meeting is aquifer. So. Just putting that out there, meaning there's a lot of people that have a lot of discomfort with how it's currently um, how it's currently written, and I know that we we're doing work to determine what we can and cannot change. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know where we stand with that, but that my point is that if we're gonna get hung up on something, I feel like it's gonna be that section. Well, it's the pain points, if you will, pressure points. It's basically the aquifer protection, non-conforming, and uh, accessory apartments. I mean, this, we know this. Yeah. We know this from the beginning. Um, I think we've got, we've come up with, I mean, with the, I mean, Gene dug out the information that we needed and a fairly simple, or you <laughs> apparently minor simplification of the existing regulations that would, should make a big difference. For aquifer? For the aquifer protection. Um, Did you guys discuss that on the 21st? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I missed that meeting, uh, so maybe I'm, <coughs> I'm probably just a little behind. Yeah, the, there's, the, I mean, the draft that we have, um, the most recent draft, basically if, if we relax uh, if we modify our definition of impervious back to what the state already specifies, then it becomes much less burdensome oh, okay. on the people in the district. But we also have the specific um, constraints. You know, we, we basically explain. You know, we have this because we are required by DEP to have this. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And at some point in the, pu in the future it may be relaxed or removed if we get the um, second source, second water source for, for uh, public safety and, and drinking supply. And that's, that project is, is on the list of somebody somewhere. Right. Okay. Um, So, so we've, we've got a good case for that. Yeah. No, I hear you. And I guess I don't want to, certainly don't want to discount John's feedback here. And I think it's something we can maybe bring to Ralph on a Wednesday call. Mm -hmm. My whole point was there may be, if we discuss it with Ralph and discuss it with the Zach and say, okay, well, maybe we do want to break this up based on my opinion before mm -hmm. I heard what you were saying, we might want to start there, then look at non-conforming. But let's... Let's take that back and we can discuss it. So option, the option that we've been going under has been one 
bylaw that hangs together with the exception of aquifer protection. But John, you're suggesting maybe there's another way of doing it with doing the recodification as one vote and then individually taking the sections. Is that what you're saying or something? Sections, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but so there's sections where um, changes to the substance hasn't really been made. Maybe the um, wording and the organization sort of even more than just renumbering and that yep. sort of thing. But then there are, um, you know, as I look through some of the material, there are some where substantive changes um, have been made or are, are being proposed. And I would think that, um, you know, some controversial, some probably not. Maybe there's ways that you sort of package up like, um, like sections and go through them that way. I would just hate to have the all the two years worth of work to go up in uh, uh, an up and down vote on I mean look what happened with the I forget what it was but um, someone started talking about signs in residential neighborhoods something that we as a as a, do you remember which yeah. one I'm talking construction about construction signs construction signs mm -hmm. yeah that we had never even imagined, and I'm not even sure that the discussion at, at town meeting was um, was right on with the way that the 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 it had it had been written. But because of the discussion, I think my sense was everyone felt a little sh gun shy yep. about it, and I think um, take that times twenty, and that's what you have here. Yep. the potential of what you have mm. not that there's any one thing that gets voted up and down but there's a lot of change here and people are not comfortable with change so there just needs to be that one thing that people are like ah, I'm not really sure well, I'd rather stay with what we have it's a, it's a, just a gamble I if that's the way that everyone wants to do that that's fine it was more sure. your time than mine <laughs> <laughs> to be well, honest the, but, but um, I, I, it just seems like a big gamble yeah presenting it to town meeting the both in the warrant and at the meeting is going to be a really challenging yeah Yep. Uh, piece of work. Yes. I agree. Um, the, I'm maybe. hoping that we're going to get more feedback in September at the September town meeting. If we have the um, turning point software and we can ask questions to find out where those hot spots yep. are, um, that I'm hoping will give us more of, of, of a guide on the best mm -hmm. path forward. If we start to see a lot of, you know, static, we may have to really take a different approach. Um, and I, I just don't think we know at this point. Yeah. We don't yeah. have enough yeah. to go yeah. by to know if it's going to be a huge gamble. I mean, they did the zoning map, and that wasn't a big deal at all. Well, that was... Thanks to a lot of preparation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, George yeah. did a fantastic job on that. Yeah. The uh, we need Billy Graham or yeah. Spurt. <laughs> well, because in the end, it was obvious on the zoning map that it was correcting um, errors yeah. um, uh, previously, um, and I think ev and there's a great it, that was the great presentation. This isn't correcting it. this. Well, there's a lot of correcting well, errors in there. There's a lot of correcting errors, and I think that I think town meeting can get that. There's some where it's making decisions about right. changes in the town. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and well, that, that's why I, I mean I, I brought up the the table of contents thing because that's a way to put a framework around it. That's a way I mean to. Um, checklist if not you know, approach kind of sure so I didn't mean to sideline sidetrack no, no, okay, I just and like I said oh, we'll, uh, I mean it's it's on everybody's mind yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay it's not a battle that we want to uh, to fail at no, <laughs> 
All right. So good. We um, covered that uh, topic. So how do you guys want to move forward here? Do you want to jump into... Can I ask some questions about yeah. what I what what we we're provided? Sure. So we've got um, really I see three packages here that we were provided: um, one on signs, one on parking, and one on the two different versions of the site plan um, review. The parking and the signs came with this list of questions. Um, which are all good questions, and my my question is, where do the answers? Who are those? Are those all from the Zach to the consultant, and are those answer those questions answered, or were those? Is that what <coughs> resulted in what's behind it? So we uh, yeah. so for signs. We had relayed the comments back to the consultant, yeah. and we are still waiting on the final revisions. So, if okay. the CBDC has additional comments, I, I, I'll tell you that I looked at this. I read through the um, the um, comments. I said, "Well, oh, yeah, that's a good comment. That's a good question. That's a good question." And I flipped through here and said, "I, I, can't, I can't dig into that right now." Um, so it is, I guess, it, well, I, it, it's not entirely true because I did, I did go through it. But um, my point being that until I think this was a good set of questions, until someone comes back and sort of answers or addresses yeah. those questions, I think it um, would be spending time I, better served. Sure. I agree. My take. Especially because well, I'm yeah. saying Nick yeah. is very interested in it as well. And I think that one of the things that we're Jean and I are kind of looking to push some guidance on is the idea behind any changes between the districts. Should we, you know, right now we have the business A, oh, business yeah. B regulations. There's been a lot of talk on streamlining, making it consistent. If we do that, you know, which which way do we go? Um, and whether or not the CPDC feels it's appropriate the way it is now, or if changes were made along those lines what the thought would be from this group well i can give you my mm -hmm. thoughts and i think that nick was of the same opinion right that there's a difference of there's a uh, um, signs that are appropriate for downtown and that's a different context for signs um, um along south main street sure. um, or in different parts of town so um and different for residential <laughs> there are signs in residential so I th I think it's appropriate that there are different I, I don't think that we want to get a one one size fits one all size thing. fits all um, I'm just so I'm not sure how we would I, I'm, I'm not sure how we devise one set of regulations for both where the right. where it's the really the downtown does the sign should be for not focused on cars. Um, I, I think and some of the specific concerns related to like the business A is okay. Well, why is single tenanted buildings only allowed to one side? That's I think one of the biggest yeah. questions and the biggest concerns from people on the ZAC as well as other people that you know other folks yeah. that have commented. And where it gets tricky is um, there have been a few businesses that um, I'll, I'll pick on the, some folks that have recently opened up used car sales. So one of them is on the corner of Washington and Maine. And I think that one before the Board of Selectmen for the license. Mm -hmm. And that's a different zoning district from the one that opened up um, over by the car wash. There's a single. Or a right. Cape Cod yeah. style house that's commercial. And so for the Board of Selectmen, um, when they get these things, they say, well, there are two businesses that are selling cars. You know, why is <laughs> one treated one way and one treated another way under zoning? And yeah, they're on Main Street, you know. Yeah, so it's that type of thing that makes it seem like it doesn't make sense, really. But 
to try and explain how the downtown includes up to the railroad tracks, and so that's and, why. And it's and maybe the que maybe the answer is you know what the downtown zo the that district should only go to Washington Street because why is that section um, mm. zoned that way? I mean, that's really the appropriate, I mean, that's not that your answer wasn't appropriate, but that's really the question, the question is, that's, is the boundary in the right place? Should that area be rezoned? Because it, it isn't downtown, and it probably, I have a hard time seeing that, that one little block ever having that same style as downtown. But That's the question. Where's the boundary <coughs> yeah. on Main Street to yeah. downtown? Yeah. I think it was probably the railroad tracks, for it, lack of any better scientific that makes a good there. That makes a good it, boundary. It yeah, good it is boundary. a boundary. You know? um, and we're really only talking about, what, two properties? Yeah. Three? Yeah, three? More, I mean, if you look at the, uh, there's the professional building, uh, between Washington Street and the yep. Ash, the, you know, the, uh, basically the yep. downtown side, um, and there's the you know McDonald's Rite Aid and so forth. I mean, which are in Reading Petroleum. Um, so there are, you know, some number of properties that it would affect. Um, you know, the the Main Street Washington. Um, and whatever the I can never remember the name of the diagonal street in there, Minot Street, that triangle. Um, oh, that's Ash. Street. Uh, it's Ash. 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 Where the, uh, Ash actually well, goes Ash across is, Main Ash Street. Ash is the tiny diagonal. Minot Street is the the, the big, big diagonal. Yeah. 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 But that's business A. And some of yeah. Yeah. The, on the on the main street side, it's business, business A, a. but it, 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 behind that, it's just S fifteen or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, I mean the 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 business A signage in business A, we probably need to take another look at, um, and we should have Nick involved, of course, because he's been more, uh, and rightfully so, more experienced and more uh, yeah. involved in that particular one. The We do have in the current bylaw since our issues about, um, you know, within in hundred feet of the interstate highway and the industrial areas and, and uh, building heights and so forth. I mean, the Without trying to raise um, a stink, there's n there's no reason in my mind why we shouldn't uh, consider the you know a modest freestanding sign and a wall sign if the building is set back more than n feet from the uh, public way. You know, have some kind of, of uh, balancing measure there. So that, I mean, if, if if they're up on the 15 foot thing, then they they get to pick. They get one or the other. And but if they're if they're further back, if they're old, the old 50 foot setback, um, then go ahead and let them have a wall sign as well as the freestanding sign because there's the, the physical separation issue. I mean, that's just a possibility. Mm -hmm. I guess the the question to me is what's the problem we're trying to solve? So here there's a bunch of questions, you know, um, is it people want, uh, businesses want more signs? Is it, you know, so instead of just going to rehab, I mean, there's one thing to go and through here and make it a little bit m easier. easier to understand, um, which I, I, I get, and then we need to figure out okay what what are the issues we're trying to sell to 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 solve is there an issue about consistency is there an issue about trying to get people more flexibility or what's the what's the well the what I've heard um, various times and various uh, things is that the uh, business tenants 
in South Main Street or, or in Business A. Uh, if they own the building, they feel punished because they only get the one sign and they have to pick one or the other. And if you rent out, you know, 100 square feet to somebody else and become a multi-tenanted building, then suddenly you've got more signs. So there's, there's a, you know, question of uh, perceived unfairness in the yeah. way it's currently yeah. written. Maybe the answer is just signage. You divvy it up the way you want. That's what a lot of sign yeah. laws do. Yeah. You get this much to work with. Yeah. Based on a, some sort of formula. So are we, can we add this to the August 11th agenda? I believe so, yeah. Yep. And ideally we would have at least some of this addressed by Ralph. can keep having at it. Yeah, we need um, something closer to the proposed organization, yeah. I think. How's that? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Do we want to dive into maybe site plan review? <clears throat> sure. I did take a read through it. Um, so, nobody minds. I'll, I'll yep. start. I, I don't understand why we're, and I may be, I'm forgetting, but why we're having a long version and a short version when the difference is two pages, from what I could see. <laughs> That's what I got yes. to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, don't gain much. Especially because I'm seeing in the short version things that are missing that are in the long version. So that was making me a little nervous that we're going to start getting version control and you make an update to one but not the other. You get a mess. Um, so, but was the yeah. idea for the short version is you include this in the zoning and then you include um, rules like we have for, I forget what it was, the minor, minor site plan. Yeah. Um, for for this um i think that's what he was getting yeah at. i i in terms of unless we have a whole book of these are the rules for this and these are the rules for that or it's other jurisdictions do um i think those rules end up falling away and it's probably better to have it all in one place yeah. even though it ends up being um, it's you pick up the zoning and that's it's in it's, it's all, all in there, there. so yeah. I don't think we have enough of those procedures for different areas that we can and we we did that with minor site plan review and it you know that's why I think we want to come back to it and it all in one spot, make it clear. Yeah. The argument in favor of the short form, um, and I think um, I lean towards the simpler is better. The entire section 1.4 um, is That's it. probably <laughs> unnecessary and, and intimidating. Well, so that's really uh, the, the big difference between the two is right. section 1.4. Yeah. And I mean, that's, this is something that should certainly be available, uh, you know, at the desk. We do will. it with um, the Zoning Board of Appeals for um, special permit. We have a whole wall of applications. Mm -hmm. So if somebody were to come in and apply for site plan review or go to the website, we could put the application there with all of that. That's how it's done with ZBA. Right. ZBA may be a little bit different because it's such a formal process for, right. site, mm -hmm. for a special permit. And usually you're getting a rejection from Glenn, so you're out yeah. the counter. Yeah. Is that less onerous than our subdivision requirements? Yeah. You can say that. I mean, when they come to you, Jesse, for site plan review, 
you're basically working with them anyway mm -hmm. on the application, the materials, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's, you know, never a perfect science that everyone just gives everything tied up with a perfect bow on it that we're there. Right. They might come in two, three months in advance, meet with both of us. Then they work with Jesse more on a day-to-day -day basis on getting the material in. So. That's, um, I guess, um, I agree that this level of detail in, in the zoning bylaw is, um, Excessive, as I think the word. <laughs> yeah, I think that. <laughs> um, and if we can, I, there are some other things in the long version that I think if we can take this out and still get the sense of it, but leave the rest of the material that's in the long version, I think we've, we're going pretty far. I, I know that uh, I'll go, when I worked at Loudoun County, we had a, um, I think it might have been the same exact list in a checklist and it had to go through you know it you had little check marks and it you know you here you go mm -hmm. you need to do a site plan review this is what it needs to be what needs to be on it so mm -hmm. it wasn't it, it wasn't in, in the bylaw. in the bylaw but it was um, it was what was required because yep. I mean, it's sort of what I assume that's what you do now, right? Um, I've seen site plan review bylaws that are two pages long. The town of Tewksbury, and they generally refer <laughs> to what the application requirements are in a very mm -hmm. abbreviated fashion. Yeah. So could we reference that no. in the bylaw? I mean, remove all this detail. Shall include. Yeah, I think what John's suggesting is you have a template for the application, maybe more of a checklist yeah, style, yeah. and that it's referred to, you know, if we can do that in the zoning and, and say that applications are going to follow a checklist that's provided and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're suggesting, or are you saying maybe slim this down to just some key points. N no, really just reference in a, yeah. um, Another document. a, okay. a checklist or, or not even, um, if we can, um, reference in a, a, you know, that a site plan will be developed that meets the requirements, um, you know, um, information available yeah you know, something referring I, I hate to to reference another document in this because then if that gets out of date or there's some problems I think yeah. with that administrative yeah versus just saying it has to meet the requirements of a site plan review that are available that meet that are available at town hall yeah. or something like yeah. that then um, <coughs> the application requirements. Yeah. yeah. The uh, then those can change over time. Um, yeah. Electronic, yeah. non-electronic, all that sort of stuff yeah. can um, uh, can change. Yeah, and we should probably find a way to remove the twelve, twelve, and one, one numbers. Um, the numbers of copies, right? Yeah, I, I had the same comment. <laughs> Find a better way. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Dave. What were what were you saying? Yeah, I didn't quite. Um, well, the in the in the proposals, both of them, it, it's, it explicitly says 12 copies, uh, presumably hard copy, and one electronic copy. Um, and the... I'm trying to 
trying to think how we would want to um, word it. I mean, the thing is, we don't. We want the, the applicant to bear the cost of preparing the documentation. And if we if we need for a particular one, if we need eight copies, hard copy, for the appropriate review, then we want those provided by the applicant. Well, that but just the the actual number. And, and we want that just basi basically what we want to say is the application must include an electronic copy of the required materials and some number of well that just goes back to providing doing this as a checklist as required because then you know Jesse can figure out you know oh for stormwater um, plans we need four of them right. you know and yeah. one electronic because I can tell you I, I don't want a hard copy stormwater <laughs> plan never right which we've stopped yeah, yeah, right right yeah. right <laughs> um, and it costs a lot of money I mean some of them cost, I mean yeah you know a couple hundred bucks right there and um, and that's silly um, but I think it's specific for each one and I think that's going to change from Right. as things go on. Yeah, so I mean, instead I, of codifying that in here, I would yeah. hope that we can move that into <coughs> the checklist. And yeah, I think it, it's not unreasonable to leave in the requirement for an electronic copy. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that I've heard that some um, uh, planning boards um, in, um, have iPads. Mm -hmm. And North just Friday. get a, just get everything electronically. Yeah, yeah I mean we've um, certain staff. We we get hard copies for additional town staff, but some staff have indicated they only want the electronic. So we've been able to go down on on a few, a few of those. Of them, right. But um, like the fire department likes to have yeah. the hard yeah. copies. Which so. Yeah. 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 Well, some things. And some things. I mean, like a, a D size or, or whatever drawing is the only way to see what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's. Yeah. Other yeah. things, the electronic copy is just fine, or maybe even better. So you can right. see what <laughs> <it is. laughs> um, the um, um, photometrics. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's an eye test. Yeah. <laughs> No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, something else that kind of stuck out to me is the fact that I don't feel like we distinguish administrative versus minor versus major site plan review very well. Like, I'm still. Mm, you know, so what you know, you mean when, which. I mean, even the criteria for when we would allow it and um, how we would, it would work. I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about minor or ma major, and then we have a little bit of a blurb about minor, and then... Well, the, but the, remember, the thresholds are elsewhere in the bylaw. Um, the, the qualification for you know, procedure A versus B versus C is, is elsewhere. This is just the... Oh, I, yeah, okay, okay. Hmm? What's that? You're talking about the thresholds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are, they, they are noted in the applicability section of this particular bylaw. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were saying? Oh, okay. So applicability. Would it would it make sense to build this up instead of down? Start with the smaller and go to the to the full site plan? Yeah. And maybe throw a table in here that kind of gives some brief criteria of when administrator would be appropriate, when minor when major is required. I think a table is a good idea. Yeah. We did yeah. that with Just the um, yeah. accessory yes. apartments. Yeah. Look at this, this looks like that. Yeah. Yep. I like that.
I did have a question, um, section 1.1.2. Everything in there is absolutely correct, professional expertise, but I have no idea why that paragraph's in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't disagree with anything in there. I'm just not sure how that, what the purpose is. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, because we don't have anything like that right now. Yeah. Okay. And the purpose, 1.1, 1 .1, the intro, the first paragraph, talks, which I like, about the, ju the, the juxtaposition of commercial properties about uh, uh, to residential properties, um, but, I, but it's a lot more than that, what we look at. You know, I think that just stretch that stresses that a little bit. It makes it sound like that's the only reason why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, in fact, you. Could, I mean, the next sentence says the same thing, but. You looking at the long version. Safety. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I think that's the. Oh. Yeah, and certainly if you go to the short version, then you don't even understand that it, it is more than than just looking at the differences between right. what about the externalities to other commercial properties. Yep. So it's not really anything specifically that it says in there. It's just the tone that it talks, it, it talks exclusively about that commercial and residential. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about this one on Wednesday, Jesse? With mm, I think the main focus was going to be finalizing definitions, oh gosh. administrative yes. sections 7, 8, and 9, awesome. talking about graphics, buttoning up, we'll button up medical marijuana, but we can certainly bring up any questions uh, while no, we no. have. That's all right. <laughs> That's enough. Yeah. Um, and then can I suggest that the note under 1.2, 1 1.21, 1 um, should we just include an exemption section? One. That note that says individual single family or two family or accessory structures are exempt from this section. No problem with that, but it's just sort of buried in there as a note, which is odd for a yeah. zoning. Can, can, we, can we have a, a, an own exemption section? Or maybe you just add it as one of the A, B, C, D, E. The following types well, of activities and uses require site plan review by the CPDC or its designee prior to construction. And then we want the opposite of that. Maybe it's its section its own section, mm -hmm. one point two point two is, you know, the following is specifically exempt from site plan review. Yeah. I think that's better than the note. Well, um, I'm kind of kind of perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, left to my own devices, I would call that 1.2.1 .1 and renumber the existing one as dot two. Do you want to say what's exempt before what's um, what's um, when it's required? Did you say you thought one point 
1.2 is kind of awkward that why is it even why there? Why is it there? So maybe if you put the exempt up there? Well, no, because no. it should go under applicability. applicability. In terms of the, well, uh, you know. I, 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 I yeah, um, if if I can put a if I can put a single sentence up front that says stop reading now. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I get you. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I think that's a rare. That's sort of a, a nuanced little thing, right there, right? Individual, single family, or two family, which are not dwellings. part of a project involving the construction of three or more dwellings are exempt. Yeah, I guess that's just yeah. It's a long. That's a that's a lot of words. To be in a note. To to well to say that if you're building a single family um, house, you don't need to go through site plan. Yeah, right? if you're building a three unit structure, you don't have to worry about site plan review. Building a three family house, let's say, nobody really does that, but. Well, three family is no, no, no. It says if you're buying a single family or a duplex, you don't need to go through site plan review. That's all it's saying. <laughs> or See? project involving the construction of three or more dwelling units, which are not a, which are not part of a project involving which are not okay. See, yeah, okay. I think this yes. needs to be yeah. cleared up because even you yeah. Yeah. couldn't. Yeah, that is awkward. I think that <laughs> right. You that's need to a, read that three catch. times yeah, to be no, able yeah. to understand that. Yeah. And, it, and, and to Dave's point, that's an important note to say we're single family to, to family doesn't apply to you. Right. Move along. Yeah, I mean, when we did this in Peabody, it was a lot clearer <coughs> how we wrote it. The Peabody bylaw, we called it right out up front, like Dave was saying. If I could say right up front, single and two families are not subject to this. Right, yeah. Stop reading here. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Go to, yes. go past, go collect $200. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think there's a better way of doing that. And, and you know, it, it, it's the kind of thing where the, basically you just say, you know, residential development or redevelopment, individual, you know, throw in the residential uh, keyword. <laughs> yeah, residential. But I like adding the table in here. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that, that would be good. That would table be would be important, yeah. yeah. It's part of public works. Does that include engineering? I was thinking the same thing. Oh, good. <laughs> it should say engineering. Can Even we do that? I mean, George is involved in He's all this. He's here for everything. So. Yeah. Yeah. If, we if we're going to call him out, he should be in the call out. Even though he is part of a DPW. Where is that at? Um, oh, so, so DPW includes engineering. It does. But it's m much more <coughs> than that, and the one area that we really rely on is engineering. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think we should probably. Where? Well, I've seen it in a few um, places. Um, yeah, procedure under 1.3 E. Yep. 1.1.2. 1 .1 Well, we're at we're gonna strike one point one point two, right? I right. think we can. I don't. Yeah, see. I don't think it's needed. Yeah, where where it's re referencing specific staff positions, like it says, public works director or director of public works, then I think we need to to include the town engineer. Mm -hmm. And we also if it's work if it's referencing a department, we can just make sure that it's 
appropriate. Mm -hmm. We appropriate also work reference. very closely with RMLD. Well, we don't need to get exhausted because I think we've got the but not limited to language in there. Yeah. Right. But the town engineer is, is, is a critical component. The way that the um, first sentence under 1.7 effect is worded is very awkward. It leads you to a different conclusion than I think what it's what the way that I, I think it's supposed to read. No. This unless 90 day lapse, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then unless there's an extension. Yeah. I think too we can unlesses. reference, yeah, too many unlesses. I think we can reference maybe because there's an approval here under 1.10 on the next page. Maybe it can say, you know, that the building permit shall not be issued by the building inspector without um, an approved site plan consistent with 1.10. Because in there it says that failure by the CPDC to take action um, will be deemed as a constructive approval. So we don't need to sort of put that in there twice and make things confusing. Mm -hmm. It's also, I mean, the, the simpler fi simple fix is just to say a building permit shall not be issued <laughs> without a written approved site plan review decision. Agreed. And I think we need to say up from the, we need to clarify the lapse of the, the date stamp of the town clerk of the application, right? Doesn't specify what. Mm -hmm. Date stamp of by the town clerk of the application. Well, I, don't, I think you don't even need that because if you re just referenced an approved site plan <coughs> as <coughs> identified in section 1.10, which right. gives all the details of the minutiae minutia of yeah. what an approved site plan. And uh, without reading it in detail, that second paragraph, I, there seems to be duplication here yeah. between yeah, 1.10 1 and 1.7 that might be able to be streamlined. Advertising consultant fees and reports. Is this just to say that it's on your dime? Or is there more to it? And is this something we've ever had to really deal with? Not in my experience with the CPDC. Mm -hmm. Maybe a you know, CYA well, kind of thing. Well, in other, on other, right on projects like the um, mm -hmm. um, Redding Woods. Redding, Redding Woods. Woods, yeah. Okay. Redding Woods used mm -hmm. this twice, yeah. or that property used yeah. this twice. I think did Johnson Woods might have used this. Yep. So. 
we just haven't had recently those big developments right. where okay. where we've required them to to let a, let us hire um, like a peer review. Peer review. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. I'm with you. Well, you would want to. You would want to probably keep it in. We do have it in our bylaw, just not yeah. as clear. Yeah. I mean, I've just I've never yeah. had to experience yeah. it, yeah. so yeah. I'm not too count, familiar with count it. Count yourself lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. The, what was what, what? What were we calling the lifestyle center? What was that project called? <laughs> Reading Cross. So, I, I, I think that would be good if we take that section out with all the minutia, the site plan content minutia, and then include the table about the requirements the for um, minor and. Right. And administrative um, review. Um, yep. Yeah, because in here there's like embedded some procedures um, on. Yeah, minor site plan. Yeah, so that it's a little bit more prominent instead of buried in there. Good. Yeah, no, it's good feedback, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Anything else from your perspective, Dave? Oh, I'm a little bit burned out on it. Yeah, <laughs> you've, been, you've been along for the ride, so. The Zoning Advisory Committee will take this. Um, well, we'll, I guess we'll have to take this back to them, Jean, on the... August 18th. 15th. Remember, we had to change that to a 15th. Oh, right. Yeah, on the 15th. So when's our next meeting? <laughs> the zoning advisory committee? <laughs> well, it sounds like it's changed, so I just want to make sure. Oh, <laughs> September 15th. Oh. That's a good question. I'm going to August 15th. I, I lose track of them. I, yeah, I, I can't keep up. Um, let's see, August. Well, today. Okay. Yeah, but I think you're right. Actually. Today is the 28th. It's, it's the, the Monday. 18th yeah. is a Monday. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think it was September 15th. Okay. So the next zoning advisory committee meeting is August 4th. Yep. So next Monday. Week from today. And we'll be doing some. Section five. 5. So you said August 4th, August 15th? August 18th. August sorry. 18th? Yep. And August 13th. 4th, 13th, and 18th. So we do a Monday, a Wednesday. Wednesday and, and a Monday. Monday. All right. And August 18th is the date that's supposed to be finalized. Okay. Um, okay. Do we want to take a break? Yep. And dive into parking. A, yes, B. <laughs> sure, I guess we need to. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, I still think there's some work needed, but okay, we'll come back. Ah.
All right, we're gonna pick this back up. And um, parking. <laughs> yeah, let me do that. Reconvene. So, let's talk about parking real quick because I think most of this, if I'm not mistaken, is really related to clarifying, simplifying, and not so much changing regulations per se. Right. Well, I, I have one. There is one structural change in here that I, um, I got to say, I completely disagree with. Um, is the inclusion of maximum parking spaces. Um, I guess, well, there's a, I'll start with this, the small issue is that you can't set the same minimum and maximum as in the number of spaces yep. because you effectively say that's what you get, that's what you only get, and if there's any deviation, then you're going to the, um, the you're trying to go get a variance. Um, we, we need to have more flexibility than that, okay. I think, um, or else I think we'd stifle development. But the, the, the big issue there is I don't think that we put maximums at all because this is, I guess, the role of <coughs> This is not to, I mean, developers know better what they need or, or business owners know better what they need for their businesses. I think we can control parking space um, proliferation through site plan review. Mm. Um, and I think that's the appropriate place to do it because then you get the idea of each individual specific condition instead of um, setting um, setting these blanket rules that you know I, I don't know we really have a, a a good handle on. Well, the George Katsufis is the uh, spokesperson slash advocate for the maximum. Yeah. Column. I would imagine. Um, I tend to agree with your with your approach. Sort of thing. I think that the, it's asking for trouble. Um, and I think that the the Zach has. What what have we got up here? This is I. I I agree with the idea of minimizing the number of, of parking spaces on a site. I think zoning is uh, setting zoning maximums in the Reading context is not quite the the way to do it. I would get I I would be I, I'd be uh, if we had more big box developments um, in town. If we had space for more big box developments, where you really needed to set some parameters on mm. on that I would I would say yeah let's develop something for those types of developments but that's not we don't have we don't have that much space in town it's everything's shoehorned in a little bit more um, and um, it, it's really it's a site by site case and a, bus a business by business case and I I just worried that someone would come in here and say oh I can only get you know I'm trying to build a kennel and I can only get um, four spaces or else I have to go through this board and that board. I, I'm not doing that. I'm going to the next town. That's my fear. Hmm. When I don't think that's really the intent. I think we can regulate it otherwise. I don't think, I don't think it's been a problem in town actually. So the type of use is that may benefit from maximum parking spaces from that column it would likely go through a site plan review in which case we would manage it through that process I mean, we already <coughs> all agreed that we don't want it in there for residential well there's Uh, 
um, keep running into this. The residential versus other is um, different in character. I mean, having a table is good. Having one table for both is awkward. Just by comparison, I pulled up Tuxbury's, and they just have one column of the use and the other column of required, required spaces. spaces, which is probably a better way to describe it than minimum. The Loading spaces um, Where did our data come from? The data for the loading, loading spaces that is something that Ralph had submitted mm. um, I know he used at least for the minimum and maximum he, I believe he said he followed ITE mm -hmm. um, recommendations but I'm not okay. yeah. certain if that was the same for loading spaces Because the with the data well no I'm, I'm sure the this is a big change from the presentation we currently have in the bylaw I don't know this is the first time I've seen this uh, mm -hmm. completed so I don't I don't know offhand how much of a difference it is from the regulations in the current bylaw. I'm not sure I would know how to find out. Mm. The you mean evaluating what's in the parking bylaw currently versus what's proposed on this table? Right. So the current bylaw has the chart and it's minimum number of off-street parking and then minimum number of off-street loading or unloaded. Okay. So those are the two columns. And it's, it's a small table, so <laughs> there's not a lot of detail. It's basically the, nothing to do with residential, obviously, for loading. Apartments, one well, space except that, 20. except that this that this proposed includes loading spaces for the multifamily dwelling. Right, we have that in the current apartment dwelling, one space for every twenty rental units. So that's okay. the same. So where is this in our current bylaw? Uh, page one twenty, six point one point one point seven. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> in the latest one. Mine is an older one. Oh, okay. I can pull it up on the screen if that's easier. No, it's okay. It's in our current bylaw, we also, I just 
realize this, we have, after our site plan review provisions, we talk about waivers of loading spaces, and I don't think that made it into the proposed language. So we'll want to make mm -hmm. sure that that's either in site plan review or specifically talked about in the parking requirements as it relates to site, any projects that undergo site plan review. Mm -hmm. I would think that you'd want it in the parking section. Makes sense to me yeah. to have it in parking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we should add that to our list here. Make sure it's in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. copy of the existing bylaw we've got a total of 10 uh, rows which is the basically of the principal uses whereas the new one has, has many more than 10 what do you think John do you like this new other than the maximum, I think this layout is useful, helpful. I, I, I think that having the n number of parking spaces for each use is important. Um, so, so that it's clear, mm -hmm. yes. And I guess that's really the, right, that's the difference, is that before we just lumped everything together, right? And that's what, yeah. yeah. And that caused lots of problems. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the current parking bylaws, I think, like two pages. Right. <clears throat> okay. So we do away with maximums. And maybe there's a um, more refined way to do the loading spaces. I mean, we have basically have a couple of different categories. Yep. You know, um, a space for every um, 15,000, you know, it's, you know it, there's a couple of, right, it's all stock answers here. Yeah, right? one space for every 100,000, right. one space for every... Maybe we can, instead of making this table look bigger and more onerous, we can have a separate loading zone where we say, Here's the requirement for these types of uses. Here's the requirement for these types of uses. Da -da -da. Just have a loading table. Yeah. The mm. one table with just the parking, the other table with the loading. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> because that would give us the opportunity, um, which I think we want to take advantage of, of. Um, discriminating between single unit, multi-unit, you know, because some of the, the uses will never need, um, you know, loading area for a semi-trailer, and some of them will always need, um, you know, the, <coughs> the big space. Yeah. You know, loading space for a single unit truck is substantially different than um, you know the the loading dock requirement at the back of market basket for mm -hmm. now, or some other <laughs> some other grocery store. Um, I yeah, I think we can get a lot more nuanced on the loading spaces. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I would also say on this is that I think that the, without going item by item, a couple of things jump out that maybe if we have a table that is not trying to convey so much information, we can also have some other um, clarifications. Um, we talk about um, parking spaces per employee. My assumption is that that's per employee of the largest shift mm. when we talk about spaces per employee. Um, I wouldn't want to include that verbiage in every single, <laughs> in every point here, in every cell, but I think that's probably, we need to make sure that that's communicated, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Um, the, um, I saw in here that gross, or, um, <clears throat> parking spaces for gross floor areas of restaurants. Is that really the way to do that? So the no. gross floor area of a restaurant, they're saying excluding basement or storage. Yeah. Um, well, that's, I don't know, trying to avoid dealing with seating layout. Because isn't Bunratty going to have kitchen area down the basement? So if you're going to include exclude basement, a lot of restaurants have the kitchen in the yeah. basement. Of course, a prep area in the basement or something mm -hmm. where there's people. I think they're saying excluding um, storage. Storage, period. So you're requiring spaces for your. It just it seems a little bit odd, right? Because to me, because there's a. You're, if you have a big kitchen then suddenly you need a lot of parking spaces versus if you have a small kitchen and lots of tables. Yep. Um, it's, it's two different, it's two different mm -hmm. things. Yes, yeah, they're two different animals. Yeah. Um, it just seems an odd way to, um, to. We currently do it based on seating is one, and then we add again employees in the yeah. largest ship. And I don't know if that's perfect, but it seems to have right. worked. Yes. The problem is we never know the real number of employees on the yes. largest shift. I know. That's it's always a problem. Debatable. Yeah. How do other towns handle it? I'm looking at Tewksbury to see what they've got. Large Their shift. seats plus employees on the largest shift. Because it's really trying to factor in the parking that you need based on your seating and the parking that you need based on your, your employees. Right. That's what we're trying to get at. Your gross floor area and then just coming up with a ballpark. Yeah. I mean, what's good about it is you don't have to play a guessing game on what the employee count is. But we've gone th through site plan applications, Jesse and I, and said, well, wait a minute, you're open to this kind of a cafe, you would have somebody working the register, yeah. you could have somebody, you know, doing this, somebody doing that, somebody doing that. What do you mean you only have three employees in the restaurant, you know? Right. It doesn't sound right. Right. So just common sense would kind of question. And then did it, what's the response been? Um, humana, humana, humana. Well, yeah, <laughs> immediately. But, but <laughs> I'll go back and go visit that. But do they end up going back to revisit when you call yeah. them on it? Yeah. 
I mean, I don't think it's that hard of a question to answer. I don't think it should be, right? I mean, when... Well, then you have to talk about your pizza stores that, you know, they have deliveries. Yeah. So do you count the drivers of the Friday night delivery? If I have a pizza store, I've got four drivers on a Friday night. Do, the, do I count those? Do they need a space? Yes. I mean, it's... I don't know if they need a space. Are they using their own car? Well, but they they're not always on the road. I mean, I speak from personal experience <laughs> because <laughs> both my sons worked at Papuccino's. <laughs> I mean, to some degree, right, do, do you care whether it's 10 spaces or 12 spaces? I mean, there's enough flexibility that... You know what, if they say, oh, no, we only yeah. have eight, and they end up having ten, or you count the delivery guy, and he shouldn't, or you shouldn't count the delivery, that's really not, that's not where we're at. That isn't where we should be at. Yeah. It's the, it's the place where, <clears throat> you know, they're trying to squeeze in um, uh, only, they're trying to get away with three spaces, and those three spaces are going to take be taken up by, all their employ their three employees. Mm -hmm. There's going to be nowhere for anyone that comes to sit and eat, and everyone's mm -hmm. going to park out in the street. And, da -da -da. and I mean, that's really neighborhoods. yeah. I mean, that's really. I mean, uh, the the one and the two here, I, I don't know, probably not that big of a deal, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, but we also want to make sure that we're not doing things that end up creating. Uh, sort of almost forcing people to do wacky stuff. So we want to be logical. Yeah. Um, which I think means ma matching seats with, you know, like really what are you trying to do? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah. The I guess the other areas like the retail store or something like that. I I get. I mean, I, I even question the, I, I'm not sure if gross floor area is the right <coughs> thing, although I like it because when it changes from one retail store to the other, they can't add parking. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about square footage of retail space, well, the next guy comes in there and they cut down the storage space in the back and they open up more retail space and suddenly they need twice the amount of parking, but you know what, they only built half the amount of parking they mm -hmm. need, so you, you're you stuck with what you get. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to Well, <clears throat> the, I mean, one of the concerns I've had for several years has been the um, the different service care, the different parking um, occupancy of employee versus customer and it's a, and it's always it's shown up a lot in the downtown uh, area it showed up in, in things because the employees need long-term parking uh, you know the two-hour limit basically doesn't work you know uh, and it would be nice if we had some way of uh, putting that in the the regulation, saying that the you know you must provide off street parking or off or parking accommodation, I guess is, would be a better phrase for um, employees. You know, they're basically the recognize that there's there's a difference between. Um, the long-term parking of parking requirements of employees, and, and you know maybe it means that you can't have more than than eight people who work there who bring their car. You know maybe they have to carpool, maybe they have to bicycle, maybe they have to take public transportation. But have some kind of, of distinction between because the customer parking takes care of itself. I mean, if the customers can't park, they can't come. The business is in trouble. You know, that was the thing that we had at Home Depot. Um, but the employee 
parking the longer term requirements is what gets the neighborhood up in arms. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how to do that. Are you site, saying site ju plan review? just specifically with the downtown employee parking? The same, thing is, the same thing is true at, at Doyen's, I mean, whatever. The, if they've got their delivery trucks, you know, parked next door because they bought the building next door. Um, but it, it's not, it's more noticeable downtown because there's uh, time regulated off st or on street parking. But the same thing is true if you have like PNS or something, you know, business in a residential area. Mm. You know, if they said, if they suddenly had a, you know, everything is free today, the cars would be all over the neighborhood. And you have the issue with the, the, you know, Middlesex Avenue library, you know, for right. special events. Right. Um, and it's not clear that there is a good answer. But that's a concern that I've had for a while. For a while. Well, uh, uh, should I really say this out loud? Um, the um, if we want a healthy downtown, it means we're going to have parking problems. Right. I mean, the two come well, hand in hand. Well, the, I and mean, so in fact, the parking the, problem shows a healthy downtown. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you know, trying to solve for downtown parking, the it is. Um, would be nothing that any one business can do on site. Um, right. And I don't think we should really even be trying to have business, downtown businesses do, um, do anything on site. So this is, uh, because that would just be the death knell for downtown. Um, uh, so a lot of this is really f more focused to to you know, South Main Street, kind of, um, or the or the REI, or the yeah, 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 the yeah sort of fitness the, type the, of thing, yeah, the yeah. outliers. Um, yeah, because I think um, that we're going to have a broader discussion with the board of selectmen as the lead, as the roadway mm -hmm. commissioners about downtown parking. We've uh, start, started that we, conversation. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. ex but, and I might suggest that the better. The characterization of the discussion would be on street parking wherever it may be you know obviously downtown is where we've got this the two hour limits but I mean the, regulating the on street parking wherever it is uh, perhaps should be the subject but we're also looking at creating opportunities for employee parking in the downtown yeah so mm -hmm. that would be the off street component I'm going to throw something a little bit crazy here, see if it works. Right now we, we sort of have this um, sort of this oddball um, um, exemption in here for anywhere within 300 feet of a public parking area. Um, hmm. Do we just it, would it make a whole lot more sense um, to just say, you know, in business B, these are the only, um, these are the parking requirements and it only site specific, I mean, it's office, it's residential and everything else, you know, just call it like it is. Like there are no parking requirements for the, all these types of uses. This would be a little bit, you know, it, it, it's what happens. Um, you sort of got to hunt through here mm. to get to there. Um, um, and, and it would change, I think the other thing is it would change the mindset about what we're talking about for parking because then you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't be thinking about, well, what if this goes into downtown what if this goes into downtown it would be more about the, the other locations <clears throat> just a thought um, I think that's a good approach with perhaps the the recognition that um, residential res residential use 
still requires the, the off street parking. Yeah, I'm not saying that everything mm -hmm. doesn't require it, but I'd be specific about you know residential use. I think office use does, and I think there's some uses that in downtown would still require. But this thing about going through with you know with daycares and uh, um, you know. Uh, retail stores and convenience stores and barber shops and funeral homes and um, exercise clubs and th I mean all of those they're not well I'm not sure that restaurants the, and yeah yeah but I mean it it might uh, it might work to say that in business B commercial use in business B there is no off street parking park there is no manure. For any commercial, any you know, commercial use. So, what's commercial use? I guess that's the mm. you know instead of I, instead of embedding <coughs> it in that, just flat out say, be a little bit more explicit because that's really well. Where we're it's you know public institutional business service. I mean, it's we've got them in the table of uses. I mean, since a residential use, there is a there. You know, say admit that there is a an off street parking requirement. Um, I don't think of any exceptions. Tony, no, there possibly could be an exception. If this fee does go all the way down to at least Washington Street on the railroad track. I believe in the past there was an issue with um, Jimbo's roast beef and Dunkin' Donuts. Where they were saying that the four or five parking spaces across the street in that little triangle island were public parking, and therefore they didn't have to meet any parking requirements. Now they're not lo no, not located near any public parking. But according to that definition, that anybody in business B really doesn't need one, they could have just built a store with no parking at all. So you are going to get problems. Uh, well, thirty times to to a certain extent. I and mean, don't forget that the lot in front of 580 Main Street, the Bank of America, isn't a municipal parking lot, um, I believe. A portion of it is. A portion of it. Or yeah. The, the new portion, portion, which is, is uh, just off of Main Street. I would have uh, to say Dunkin' Donuts is at least 300 feet away from there. Yeah. So there's a few, well, there are a few, there are a few, uh, yeah, absolutely, there are a few spots within business B that are not within the 300 feet there uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a it, it, it's a few yes. and I guess the the question is um, um, each Dunkin Donuts perfect example um, Dunkin Donuts isn't going to go into a place where there's no parking unless they are um, it, Unless, they're, they have, they, unless they can rely on foot traffic, right? I mean, they're just they're they're not going to do it. Um, is it downtown? Do, do I want to make that commitment to say, you know what? Even in this even in this condition, or maybe the the thing is to make sure that we do have parking for everyone. Yeah, because. The issue is that the a business with inadequate parking is its own remedy. I mean, without too much trouble, the business will go away. Uh, it's blue. So that's the, you know, four parking places with two driveways is a bit excessive mm -hmm. in Jimbo's and, and yeah. Dunkin' Donuts and so forth. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure that we can do much of anything about that as an existing property. Uh, but the point is well taken. On yeah. y y there are a couple of thing, a couple of locations we we would need to think about if we did that. Mm -hmm. So we've we've used up our time. <laughs> That we've allocated to this. I mean, we, we could keep going, um, or do we want to take this feedback back to the zoning advisory committee and? Mm, I think we have to. Yeah, yeah, bat it around with them. I think we've got some good input here. Um, remove maximum parking spaces. 
perhaps a separate table for loaning spaces, um, categorize the, oh no, that was the loaning spaces. And then what you were suggesting, John, about 300 feet from a municipal yeah. lot. And then make sure that the that when we're using minimum spaces per gross floor area, that that's really what we what we want to do. Yep. Yeah. And I think we landed on for restaurant. We probably well, I don't know where we landed with that. I think there's arguments for and against. I mean, for like a bar, we have a space for 125 square feet of customer service area. Uh, right. Right. Where did that come? I mean, I, I think that makes more sense than gross floor area for a facility like that. I mean, for a, for a, um, even a restaurant. I'm not sure that's the right number, but <coughs> that right. calculation. <coughs> so they, I just want to make a point yeah, about please. the restaurants. Um, our current bylaw says one space for every four persons. And um, that may relate more to when families would go out to eat, there'd be four people and one person would drive a car and, you know, um, it's not like that anymore. You know, there's more smaller right. um, groups of people going out to dine, not necessarily the family of four. So it might be worth suggesting that you're seeing a lot of smaller parties at restaurants, and so that generates one for every, like Tuxbury has one for every 2.5 patrons. Mm, I guess that goes to the point of the... Um, where do you want to set that? Where do you want to set the, mm -hmm. the, the parking at? You want to make sure that it's, and I'm not advocating one way or the other, just pointing it out, right? That um, if you set it at one at every 2.5, that means that you're building a lot of parking with every restaurant. Enough so that it doesn't spill out onto the street, um, but a lot of parking. That means the restaurant's full, right? I mean, that's a yeah. That would accommodate a full restaurant. Yep. Um, where if you go with one point mm -hmm. one per four, it, yeah, you probably probably don't have enough parking if the if the restaurant is completely full. Yeah, especially um, business A. What's that? Especially in business yeah. A. Yeah. We've seen that where the restaurant parking is spilled over. Um, and is that okay or not? Uh, wasn't the night I was at the Board of Selectmen meeting when yeah, the yeah, neighbors were yeah. fit to be tied and the police chief actually had to um, create a parking rule that says you can only park on one side of the street. It became such a problem in the neighborhood. Well, that's what, Sam's Bistro? Or was it a, a different one? Yeah, that was Sam's okay. Bistro. And is, the, is it still an issue? There's still cars that are up and down Hopkins Street, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, Sands came to an, uh, an arrangement of some kind with Meineke, uh, but it's not, probably not well enough uh, apparent mm -hmm. to so the customer. In hindsight, the four per didn't, because they met the four. They per, met it. They met yeah. it. Yeah. And um, the employees. Yep. And the employees, even though I remember we were questioning that, right. that, that, um, that in, in that situation, if you're on South Main Street, where you have no other option but to go on the residential yeah. side street. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, especially where Sam's Bistro has a bar, and some people just go to the bar. So those are all individual cars. And I guess that's real, That's why I was thinking, right, that's different than if you're, even if, let's say, even, let's say Dunkin' Donuts um, goes away and 
um, Jimbo's goes away and that gets redeveloped as a sit-down restaurant. That would be different even if cars sort of spill off that site, which they would, they could be accommodated somewhere. They could be accommodated. There's that little spot there. People could go park <coughs> in the back there. I mean, there's enough yeah. downtown. There's got to be enough downtown mm. to be able to accommodate that. And that's why I was thinking, you know, sort of it, it would at least give us a way to think a little bit right. differently about, you know, this we're really developing parking requirements for that South Main Street, mm. sort of the more, more like a lot of Tewksbury. Mm. <laughs> so, okay. can we, this will, will this be on the agenda for the Zach and the Fourth or no? Um, oh, we're still waiting on. Site plan is on for oh. the 18th, August 18th. And parking is on the 13th. And when is our next meeting after that with CPDC? We have a meeting on the 11th. 11. And the... Uh, the 25th? 25th. We want to review this on the 13th with the Zach and then bring it back here on the 25th. I think that's what we got to do. How does our agenda look for the 25th? I, I think it's pretty open. I mean, we haven't had too many big projects. I mean, most of it, most of it will be related to any sort of zoning public hearing. So. Okay. Does that work? I'm on vacation that week, but it work that out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I hope no one else is. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm not. All right. Um, so. I work for everybody? Yep. Yes, yep. Planning updates and other business. Yeah. Um, so, you probably heard about um, a demolition delay application for a very prominent, I think we might have mentioned mm. it here, um, property on Summer Ave. One of the um, few examples of Italianate uh, architecture. It's 186 Summer Ave. So um, the Historic Historical Commission met Thursday night and voted to issue the delay. So the clock starts now for the six-month demo delay. What is being proposed from the new buyers is a, I guess it's a. It's a Dover um, amendment, right? It's yeah. well, we think like, it is. Like. We're going to verify with town council that they meet that criteria. But what they are proposing to build is something that. The neighborhood is very concerned about because it really doesn't fit. It's a 10,000 square foot building that is going to be used as a sort of a quasi educate. Well, it's an educational use, but it's not really a school. It's sort of social services type of operation. Yeah, there was a thing. I mean, in today's paper, yeah, about it, that the yeah. Uh, what nine thousand square foot single story building? Single story. Single, I mean, doesn't fit with the, the neighborhood. Doesn't fit at all. No. Does th this property back up to um, to the school? Yes. Yeah. There's um, actually two lots. And the school committee's looking for a parcel on which to build um, some facility. Yep. <laughs> I don't know that that's question. still. Uh, Early Next. Child and Education Center, I think town meeting spoke pretty loudly last time that at least that version of it wasn't going to fly. Well, well, the version of I mean, the version citing it on, on Oakland Drive, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Which but went down in flames. I'm but just, just saying <laughs> <laughs> that it wouldn't be inconsistent with the neighborhood. You well, know, that is, I mean. As opposed to a building that's completely inconsistent with the neighborhood. Yeah. One that might be in town control. Yeah, the so town's the looking at some other condition. options for how to do what, what they're trying to do with the early childhood ed. Um, so the, I think there might be another approach to get there, which wouldn't involve buying more property. 
<laughs> Caverns under the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I know what you're saying. It's kind of obvious that it's an abutter to a school, so yeah. we have needs for school. Yeah. But um, anyway, this neighborhood group was meeting tonight. They're organizing themselves. What's that? Two birds, one stone. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. They are organizing themselves, and um, they're going to be moving forward with some pretty aggressive action on this. So mm -hmm. meeting tonight, right? I got an email yeah. today. Yeah. Save Reading from Save Reading, something. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I know they're meeting tonight. Thank you very much. Um, so that's that's kind of big. Yeah. And we, I got bombarded with emails over the weekend. <laughs> it's just amazing. So. Gee, I'm surprised that they didn't get me. <laughs> <laughs> I just got the Friday the Friday phone call or whatever it was from uh, Saint Agnes. Yes. Um, I got some calls about St. Agnes. I've gotten letters and different things. Um, about what? About the uh, St. Agnes School. The Ted, what Ted Moore was proposing. Oh, yeah. So there seems to be um, a lot of concerned neighbors about what's going to happen with that. And um, uh, the people that I met with, um, some folks from the church, parishioners who were interested in seeing that project going fo go forward, Ted Moore's project. So my response was um, that if he wants to go forward, he needs to come back to the CPDC and mm -hmm. make a formal request that his meeting before this group was really just preliminary. So um, there was some talk that maybe he would reduce the, what was it, 61% concentration right. of affordables down to some number. And they were asking me, what's the right number? I said, I have no way of knowing. That's up to the CPDC. Mm -hmm. So nothing's happened formally with that. No, they've been, beyond a, they've been asking, asking around, talking about. Oh, mm -hmm. trying to garner sport? No. Oh. Or um, trying to understand the uh, points of concern in possible alternatives. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See if it's a viable yeah. attempt. Um, gotcha. We had something out on the, on the planner's list, sir, um, that there was discussion about off site affordable units. And. Um, one of the planners, I guess she had worked on the Cape, she said, oh yeah, we allowed it, but it has to be comparable to what's being provided on site. Uh, you can't, it has to be apples for apples and oranges for oranges. You can't have one thing on the on site and then, you know, something else for the off site. The finishes and all that, yeah. you know, what type of yeah. flooring yeah. and what type of yeah. this, that can vary. Yeah. But, but the type of unit. Something, yeah, something. Least. Right. Yeah. Has to match. These are completely. So. Well, not. I mean. <laughs> that's up for debate, I suppose. Right. But. Yeah. Sure. Um. So anyway, I don't know what the outcome will be on that, whether it's coming back or not. Mm. But um, there's a lot of discussion out there. And. Um, oh yeah, we have to do our site plan review decision on the library. So they were in the packet. There was a couple of corrections on the square footage, um, uh, and a couple of places they referenced one number in the application, and that's the number we used. And they said, "Oh no, no, it's eight thousand versus nine thousand." So just a couple of um, notes on the site plan review decision that we want the. CPDC then. Would we want to actually update this and refile it? Would we want the board to take a vote to amend the site plan decision? Um, it's up to you guys. If you want us to just go back and strike it out and, you know, initial it type of thing. I think it's probably fine. Yeah. It's, mi it's all minor stuff. Yeah. 
Okay. So it's nothing changed in the actual site plan. It was the math that someone did at some point. Yeah, and but there are a couple of other editorial, you know, this type of window versus that type mm -hmm. of, you know, minutia. You good with that, Dave? Well, I'm, I'm just double checking out, you know, the, I've got no categorical objection. I just wanted to make sure. And then, of course, we had the Board of Selectmen update last week on the EDSAT and on the zoning. Was that last mm -hmm. week? Two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, two weeks ago on the zoning um, project. So. Um, let's see. And we've been funded for the Economic Development Plan. I think I said that last mm -hmm. week. So we're moving forward with that. Um, Tomorrow night we have the bike and ped plan going to the Board of Selectmen. So that'll be the last of that. Okay. And we're probably going to use MAPC for some more work in the upcoming year. The um, Board of Selectmen is doing what they're calling um, Reading 2020, which is like a strategic plan for the town. And uh, we may use them to help us with that and identifying you know, it's that same issue of we really can't <coughs> afford the government that we have. So to think about um, going through and making a uh, inventory, like of all of our social services, right. what services do we provide, and then thinking about, okay, are we willing to give up anything and to stay Re within? Regionalization, yeah. 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 And so there's um, some needs for some assistance with that, and I think MAPC would be helpful with that visioning and that kind of thing. Good. Yeah. Do you have a comment? Well, um, is it worthwhile take, doing a, an a affirmative vote on the modification of the site plan review decision? I think that's probably a good idea. And then I'll refile it with the town clerk okay. so they have the appropriate copy on file. Move that the CPDC uh, confirm the site plan review decision for the 64 Middlesex Avenue Reading Public Library as amended. Second. All those in favor? Good. Okay. I'll be honest, I really don't feel like doing meeting minutes tonight. 10.30. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> I'll, I'll review them and give you my comments on Wednesday. Sounds good.